What is going on? It's Alex coming back at you with another video and today we are going to be breaking down Chad Reuter's brand new five round mock draft. If you are new, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. You guys know how to use YouTube. Blow my face on my board. Below there are all the great ways to get involved in the community as being able to take advantage of our two sponsors, one of which being Olipop, which will be keeping me alive during the stream because I've already heard how ass this was. Gonna be completely honest. This, this guy's the last mock draft. The four render was complete cheeks and I've heard about one of the moves. It's going to be a live reaction, but I've heard about one of the moves and I'm already gearing up for another massive disappointment. But we kind of sometimes have to throw in a little bit more of the fun side of this. I like to be able to review really good mock drafts, but also sometimes it's nice to see me lose my mind for your pleasure. Let's get right into this. So starting out with the number one overall pick, it's going to, I mean, Jesus, man, like, why do I have to scroll until... Mm, NFL.com. Uh, number one pick is going to be Caleb Williams. Let's not waste any time on this. It's the right pick. It's the best pick. Uh, but the draft starts pretty much at number two. Commanders go Jaden Daniels. It might end up being very similar to the Niners and Mac Jones, where this is essentially just, you know, them just saying, okay, well, you're going to tell us that we're getting Jaden Daniels? Okay, sounds good. But, you know, Jaden Daniels works really well in a Cliff Kingsbury system. He's the best impact on day one of the quarterbacks that are remaining. And you know what? Some some new regimes just like to make sure that they get a guy who's not a complete bust. And I highly doubt that apart from injury, Jaden Daniels would be one. So I uh, like Jaden Daniels quite a bit. He is my QB too. But I also understand that there is a lot of legitimate downsides to his game. Also, his fragility. Uh, pick number three, the Patriots go Drake May. You know, I think that's the right thing for New England to do. He needs a little bit more time to develop. So I actually don't really think that the Patriots would be missing out on being able to still rebuild their roster with great talent. Uh, so I don't really think the Patriots are going to improve that much in the short run with Drake, but I do think in the long run, they will be very, very, very happy going after Drake May. At pick four, the Broncos go J.J. McCarthy. So nice little trade up there with Arizona. Obviously, Arizona in this case will be acquiring future draft capital. And J.J. McCarthy is not really ready to be a day one guy unless he's on a super loaded roster. and I think Arizona would be very smart to do this. They have a lot of picks. Granted, it would always be nice to have another first round pick for Arizona. But again, I mean, this might end up being a future number one overall pick the Cardinals ended up adding. So we do love that. Uh, but it apparently gives up first and third round picks and 2025 to be able to move up. I think that Sean Payton will get fired by um, probably midseason if that actually did happen. Because, hate to say it, but, you know, JJ is not legitimately a super superstar right out the gate but he makes a uh, easy throws and that's really what does matter it keeps the offense in tempo in tempo and that's why the michigan wolverines were able to do so well and be able to win the championship is because when you keep a, a machine well oiled it works very well and once you start not being able to make sure that it maintains that momentum that's when things fall apart at pick number five chargers go marvin harrison jr best player available position of need makes sense uh giants end up going malik neighbors so nothing asinine just yet i mean again the broncos need a qb so if you really think that jj is that tier above um that is understandable uh titans joe alt another one where you know at this point we've pretty much written it in stone. Uh, but the Cardinals end up trading up with the Atlanta Falcons, which we did a mock draft last night on our live stream, which you can check it out on this show. You can check it out on the Draft Bros YouTube channel or on Broshmo show as well. But we did a two round mock draft with trades. Might end up posting that as its own video. If you guys want to see that as its own video to, you know, make it a little bit less of it having to scroll through a whole entire uh, live stream, then feel free to let me know because I already have it ready to load up. But if you guys don't want it, there's no reason to screw with the algorithm, right? But the Falcons end up trading up for Romo Dunes. I think it's a smart move for the Cardinals. The only issue is how much would you be giving up? Because you're going up from 12 to 8, and you don't have like 11, 23, for example. Like it is, you're having to give up a third and a fifth round pick to be able to move back up. Again, you did end up essentially acquiring the future number one overall pick. That is valuable enough, in my opinion, to make me feel comfortable with the idea of this. Because this team does need a wide receiver and Rome could be that true wide receiver one for you. I don't really have that level of faith in Romo Dunze, but some people do. Uh, pick number nine, the Bears go Dallas Turner. Uh, great pairing up with Montez Sweat. Perfectly fine with that. 
The Jets end up going Brock Bowers at pick 10. I've talked about this. I think offensive line's the best possible route that they can go. You know, if you can end up having a really solid offensive line with great depth, especially with tackles with injury history, very, very notable and very high level frequency of injury history, uh, you're almost guaranteed to be still having to start your number 10 pick in due time and especially in critical moments. So uh, I still think Brock Bowers would be an A minus pick for me. It just depends on what the Jets do with the rest of the draft and where the offensive linemen go. At pick number 11, the Vikings go Byron Murphy. So obviously they stay put. They ended up missing out on the top four QBs. RIP to them. But Byron Murphy is a very talented player. I'd prefer, you know, honestly, at this point, you might as well move back and try to recoup some of your picks. It's not a good look. I mean, this this team really is kind of cap. It's capital strong. But, you know, Byron Murphy is a very talented player. I just don't. I don't see that big enough of a gap between his play and uh, Jerzon Newton's to garner pick 11 when, you know, at pick 23, you'll most likely get Johnny Newton. Uh, pick number 12, Falcons go Jared Verse. I mean, I think that's as smart of, as, of a move as possible. It's what I do. I think the Falcons should do it. So for some reason, Chad Reuter is doing a good job. So that's a first. Um, we got Las Vegas Raiders going JC Latham here. I'm going after another Bama tackle is going to give you all some PTSD, but I think JC Latham is far superior to Alex Leatherwood. Granted, I've had a good period of time that I was very, very low on JC Latham. That might end up, you know, coming back to bite y'all in the ass again because JC still, he is ascending in his game and not really necessarily day one polished, but great run support. I think that that would definitely lean a little bit more towards the vision of what the team is trying to become. At pick 14, the Saints go Olu Fashanu. I think that's great. Again, like get the best tackle available and he is the best tackle. I think that, you know, naturally when you look at their drafting philosophy, they appreciate physicality. And Olu, he actually brings a little bit of that. But I think that when you actually look at the left tackles left, Troy Fautanu is a little bit more of what the Saints would be going after over Olu Fashanu. But I do think Olu would be the better pick, if that makes sense. At pick 15, the Colts go Quinion Mitchell. You know, super versatile piece. This is as good of a pick as you could probably ask for. So that's an A-plus right there. This is the pick that I was talking about. So obviously you all know my buddy Keon, my best friend, uh, former co-host of the show for two episodes. Love you, Keon. But, um, you know, we it wasn't two episodes. It was probably like, you know, 10 episodes. But uh, Philadelphia Eagles trading up for Graham Barton. He's an Eagles fan. So this is what really made me want to go into this because they essentially traded a second round pick to move up for Graham Barton. Really? Like, really? Like, mm. like, I've done some stupid things in my time. Absolutely. And y'all call me out on it. Y'all are very good at calling me out on it. Just like I'm good at calling out uh, Mr. Reuter here because he gets paid dollars to do stuff like um, create BS for clicks. I try to at least make some formal logic when it comes to some of my moves. Sometimes I like to test a theory, but at least the theory has some logic. This doesn't. Trading a second round pick to move up for a player who is remotely... Rem not even remotely close to being actually the 16th best player for the Philadelphia Eagles. It's it's not a good move. It's not a good move at all. Uh, it's, and they ended up, I believe, giving up one of their second round picks to move up this far. That is just a hashtag no bueno. Uh, the Chiefs end up moving up with the Jaguars to take Xavier Worthy to. All right. Well, I was just giving Chad some credit. Um, this is obviously an atrocious move. You all know this is an atrocious move. Xavier Worthy wasn't a top 32 pick for the entire season until he ran in the four twos. And all of a sudden people are just like, Oh my God, like as if he wasn't fast, the 165 pound player, the chiefs need somebody. If this were Brian Thomas jr, I'd be fully down for it. But you know, there's no reason on planet earth. You'd go Xavier worthy over someone who is, you know, significantly better and Brian Thomas jr. In almost every single way. But the Bengals end up doing the right thing and going after Brian Thomas Jr. here. Missed out on a tackle, but we have five rounds to go over. Um, the Rams end up going Chop Robinson. I'm significantly lower on him. I think he's a DPR. If the Rams want to win right now, this is not the right move. You go after someone who's more day one ready. And I just don't know how long the Rams are confident in being able to actually win. 
Uh, you know, Aaron Donald's now gone. That's a significant loss, significant blow to the defense. But it's also a significant blow to your impact on the game. It's not like you can have Aaron Donald there to cover up for where Chop Robinson can't be able to play at the highest level. And that is not good. And Chop Robinson is a DPR at best. I think that he has a lot to work on. Could end up being a top 10 edge rusher in the NFL. But the chances of that are so damn slim. You have to be a team that's really confident in yourself to get in love with Chop Robinson. Because if you look at it, there's very the wins are awesome. But a lot of it's not very translatable. And a lot of the NFL tackles that he did go up against, primarily like Dewan Jones, Paris Johnson, uh, 2022, and his game didn't add anything in the year after, uh, that was an embarrassment. So against even Dewan Jones, he couldn't beat Dewan Jones with speed. That's where I really started getting worried. Um, did we see another? It, hold up. <laughs> Wait, we got a close. Oh, I'm so stupid. <laughs> okay, it's my fault. Uh, Queen of Mitchell to the Colts actually is the second best move. I ended up talking about Terry and Arnold, but Terry and Arnold falls to the Steelers. Uh, by the way, that's still a great pick for the Colts. I was just, I, for some reason, I'm so conditioned to see Terry and Arnold. I was like, did we see a clone of Terry and Arnold? Um, top two corners are great moves for either of these teams. The Steelers especially because you can, I mean, I have Terry and as the mini Joey Porter Jr. So my bad on that. I'm crapping on Chad here and I'm being an absolute moron, but you know, we all make mistakes. Some of us make mistakes like putting, um, I mean, having a team trade up to number 16 to draft an absolute bum. Just kidding. I love uh, Graham Barton, but for the draft capital given up, it didn't make sense for the Eagles. But at pick number 21, the Niners move up for Tali Fuaga. I love that. I mean, that's actually a really good move for the Niners. I think that the Steelers should still be in the market for offensive line, but very hard to argue against my number three player in the class. But Tali Fuaga to the Niners, I think that's a great, great move. This team needs a right tackle, and at worst, Fuaga could be a super elite interior offensive lineman. I've been pushed back on by some people by using the term Hall of Fame too easily. I do think Tali could be a Hall of Fame guard. But he's going to be a starting quality tackle and certainly an upgrade for San Fran. That's well worth the move up. Uh, Seattle ended up moving back. I think that's great for Seattle. But Jerzon Newton ends up going to Seattle. That's great for him. I think that's perfectly fine. I mean, that's you get your trade value. You get a really good player. He apparently is hard to coach. That's per his own Instagram or per his own Twitter, excuse me. And, you know, I don't really care. If you're hard to coach and you're still that effective, I'll take it. Then at 23, the Vikings go Bo Nix. So, you know, you end up making it out here with a really solid quarterback. Bo Nix is getting a little bit too much shade. Uh, he's a very, very solid quarterback. Underrated. Uh, no doubt the people who actually who the opinions that I really respect in the community like Bo Nix, that's good enough for me. Uh, but the Vikings end up getting their quarterback as well as Byron Murphy. So they get a defensive playmaker as well as a signal caller that has been shown to actually be able to make some really, really solid moves down the field. Uh, he has a big arm, just didn't really use it too much. Pretty low average depth of target this year. Cowboys end up going Jonathan Brooks in the first round. I don't know if a running back who tears his ACL and wasn't that incredible. Let me like emphasize the word that incredible. Uh, he was a very, very good back, but tearing your ACL and then going in the first round doesn't really seem like, I feel like Bijan would have been around this range if he just randomly tore his ACL at the end of the season. And uh, Jonathan Brooks, no Bijan, not even remotely close. But Peyton Wilson ends up going to the Packers at 25. Uh, I think linebacker actually is one of the dark horse positions the Packers will be drafting in the potential first round if they end up not going Cooper to Gene. Peyton Wilson, apparently, according to, I, I'm forgetting now his name because I keep having Chad Ruder stuck in my head, but there's a report that Peyton Wilson as well as Braden Fisk have uh, ugly medicals. Could be a reason they fall, but also Peyton has had an injury riddled history, and I think that there's significantly better linebackers factoring that in in this draft, but I do think the Packers could be one of those teams that drafts a linebacker in the first. Then at pick 26, the Buccaneers go Troy Fautonu. Hard to see him slipping this far. Uh, he has him listed as an offensive guard. I still think he can play actual tackle, but the Buccaneers would be running up to the podium for this. Uh, Cardinals ending up going Nate Wiggins. Uh, I don't really understand why we're we're doing this right here. Um, he ended up weighing 182 pounds at his pro day. So referencing old numbers, which again, we all make mistakes, but 
you know, if you're going to specifically emphasize it on your mock draft that, you know, again, you're working for NFL Network. So also what's up with the editors? They kind of should be reviewing this. Uh, you should probably get your facts right, which y'all call me out when I get my facts wrong. And I love you for that because I'd rather get my facts wrong once. Bills end up going law two at pick 28. I think that that would be really good value, but A.D. Mitchell is the correct pick if he's there. Darius Robinson goes to the Detroit Lions. If they're going to be going after a bigger edge rusher, I think that it will be going after uh, Marshawn Neeland and not Darius Robinson. At pick 30, the Ravens go Tyler Guyton. I think that's a smart move. I mean, you're working for the future here, but with Morgan Moses gone, that right tackle spot is complete cheeks, and then Stanley's not even healthy anyways, so that's the correct move. At pick 31, the Dolphins, uh, via that trade back with the Niners, go Patrick Paul. I'm not a fan of Patrick Paul. Hate to say it. I've tried really hard to like Patrick Paul. I just, I just don't. Like, so y'all know what I think about that. Um, I want to hype him up a little bit more, but I, I mean, he's gotten better, but that doesn't really mean very much. At pick 32, the Jaguars go Max Melton. Remember part of that trade back. Uh, I think Max Melton's a phenomenal player. He is a top 32 guy on my board, so I'm not going to shame that too much. Of course, I still think A.D. Mitchell would have been the correct move. So uh, now that we have spent so much time talking about that, let's get right into rounds two through five where, uh, you know, we can mention some other names. Michael Penix to the Raiders via a trade up. I don't know if the Panthers really need to trade down in this situation with A.D. Mitchell on the board, but, you know, we ball. Uh, Michael Penix to the Raiders is a perfectly fine move. It just depends. I mean, I don't know why they wouldn't have tried to trade up to the end of the first to get that fifth year contract. It does seem a little redundant to take him here because I don't really see too many teams above wanting to go after Michael Penix. But uh, New England Patriots go Marius Mims. Incredible value. Obviously, you're going to be trying to train him at left tackle, but Georgia trains their guys to play left and right. Cooper Beebe ends up going to the Cardinals to pick 35. Love the representation right there. Of course, I think Jordan Morgan's a better interior offensive lineman than him, but the commanders end up sniping Jordan Morgan at pick 36. Great value there. Pick 37, the Chargers go Blake Corum. It's a little bit early, but actually I could randomly see because running backs usually go higher than I expect. Um, this could be the pick where the Chargers could try to reach on a player like Blake Corum. I think it would be the incorrect move, but still one that is possible. Titans then go Lad McConkey. You're going to be putting him in the slot most likely in that situation, but Lad McConkey is a great player. At least you're going after a very talented guy. I'd be going a linebacker in that situation, though. Pick 39, the Panthers go Braden Fisk, one of the guys who I talked about with potential medical concerns. Uh, great athlete, but I think the guy who we really should be focusing on is not Braden Fisk, but it actually should be Michael Hall Jr., uh, commanders end up sniping Cooper to Gene. That might be because, I mean, he could technically slide to this spot. There's so many good players that, you know, if the NFL slightly likes one guy more than another, it might disproportionately drop a player. This is not out of the realm of possibility. Uh, but this would be a great move for the commanders. Longer term option. Uh, they do need a corner for sure. Packers end up going Jaden Hicks. They do need a safety as well. So linebacker safety, two of the positions that I do like to draft from them every time. Then we got the Houston Texans going Cam Hart. And I think it's a, a little early for Cam Hart, unless you're sending him to a team that values that size and physicality. I think Cam Hart's not that great, but I also think the Texans could be in the market for a corner two for the long run. I think that the best move here would be to Andre Sweat, though. Uh, Atlanta Falcons going Kool-Aid McKinstry. Great value, great player. Y'all know that I love him, so is what it is. Um, here's this bullshit again with Ben Sinnott in the first round you know, or in the second round, excuse me, like it is what it is. We could see it happen because, you know, people are going to start artificially inflating the after the catch, like in quote, like, he's not even a good route runner, but the after the catch tight ends since Sam Laporta is doing so well. But I don't know if the, I don't think that Carolina Panthers would be dumb enough to take Ben Simmons in the second round, but we got the Saints going Xavier Leggett. I think this is a perfectly fine move. This receiver core needs a player like Xavier Leggett. If he's there, that is a great selection. Colts going Johnny Wilson at 46. Uh, I love Johnny Wilson. Y'all know this, but I don't really know if the Colts should be that desperate for a player like Johnny Wilson. Granted, they went after Quinion Mitchell, not Terry and Arnold in the first round. Um, I think pass rusher would be the better selection here. But Johnny Wilson, I actually think he can really play and be a starting caliber receiver. 
would be a steal. Uh, pick 47, the Giants go Ennis Rakestraw. They need a corner desperately. I think this would be a great move for them. Jaguars then go at Marshawn Nealand at 48. You know, sometimes BPA is the right thing to do. The Bengals then select Mason Smith at 49. I'm fine with that. It's a little bit early for me, but you do also have a little bit of time to develop him a full year. Uh, Seattle then takes Tevin Wallace. That was the 50th overall pick the Eagles sent to. Jesus. I mean, the Seahawks essentially just picked a third round player at best um, at pick 50. So it's very Seattle Seahawky, but they need a linebacker. End up taking one there. Steelers then going Jackson Powers Johnson. I already know my Steelers nation is going to love that one. Terry and Arnold, Jackson Powers Johnson would be a dream. Uh, Rams go Michael Hall Jr. I talked about him earlier. Obviously a big fan of his game as it's developed. Uh, Eagles then also get Adonai Mitchell. We'll talk about that another time. I mean, hell, I, I could just point out to my number 10 spot on my board and then y'all will understand as to why I am, uh, you know, a little perplexed with that. 54 Browns go Edron Cooper. Great value. Obviously, I would have taken him for the Philadelphia Eagles, but A.D. Mitchell there, understandable. They should be looking for a longer term option at receiver. I think Edron Cooper would have been the best pick, though. Uh, Dolphins go Jatavian Sanders. It's a little bit early for Jatavian, in my opinion, but you know, the Dolphins should be one of those teams also continuously trying to trade back, even though they already did it once. You know, Jatavian Sanders, not a bad pick, but just a bit early. Pick number 56, Cowboys go Brandon Coleman. I'm not a fan of that at all. I didn't really like Brandon Coleman's game. Uh, he's a monster, but, you know, I don't think you need to take him at 56 if you're the Cowboys. I'd be happy to wait until day three and get someone who's just as good, if not better, than Brandon Coleman. Pick 57, the Buccaneers go Javon Bullard. I wasn't a huge fan of Bullard's game either. You know, him at the Senior Bowl, uh, there were, like, I could tell that was just not a big fan of his game. Let's just put it that way. He has some highlight level tape, but, you know, for me, he's a early day three guy, which is good enough, but we're talking about pick 57 here. Roger Rosengarten then goes to the Green Bay Packers at 58. Um, he's getting his official eval probably today or tomorrow. And from what I've seen when watching Troy Fawatanu, I might say that this could be within feasibility. This could be within feasibility, but we'll see about that. 59, the Texans go to Vondre Sweat. You know, I talked about it with the earlier pick. So obviously I'm going to be fine with it now. Bills go to Tez Walker at pick 60. It's a bit early for me. Uh, drop issues. And then you're essentially trying to ask him to be your number one wide receiver. Don't think that's going to work. Zach Zinter broke his leg. Don't know why the Lions would select him in the first, but or in the second round. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, but it is what it is. Interior offensive line, at least it's going to be an upgrade and he'll have a full year to rest under Zeitler. Pick number 62, Ravens go Jalen Wright. The home run hitting aspect feels like a Keaton Mitchell thing. I don't think they need to go after Jalen Wright, but I can understand if the Ravens want to continue adding some more to that running back core behind the King. Uh, 63, the Niners go Kamari Lassiter. It's a pick that I made myself. Uh, Jaguars then ended up getting Mason McCormick as part of that trade back. So, um, you know, Mason McCormick, I actually think he needs a little bit more time to develop. And this is actually a really good spot for him to go because he's a good athlete and bulky loves his athletes. At pick 65, TJ Tampa goes to the Panthers. They need a corner. TJ Tampa, I'm not a huge fan of his, but at this point, it's not a bad pick. Cardinals go Braylon Trice. As long as he actually gets back to 275 and plays the way he did, I don't care if he'd run a 4-9. The fact is, he's extremely efficient and extremely talented. Pick 67, the commanders go Troy Franklin. Again, it's another guy who I'm really low on, but I'm perfectly fine in this range taking him. The talent on the field is incredible. I just don't know what the hell happened at the combine. Like, it is a legitimate concern as to why there's that big of a discrepancy between how he performed at the combine and how he performed on the field. Pick 68, the Patriots go Roman Wilson. Uh, it's going to be a small ass receiving core, but, you know, Roman Wilson's a very explosive player and he could just be a really, really nice, reliable target there for Drake May. Uh, 69 for the Chargers go Tanner Bortolini. You know, I don't know if, again, after offensive tackle, I'm going to be going into your offensive line. So TBD on that. Pick 70, we got the Giants going Trey Benson. That's great value for him. That's It's a team that needs him as well. Uh, Cardinals go Ricky Pearsall at 71. At this point, that's totally worth selecting. So I'm perfectly fine with that. Tyler Newbin then goes to the Jets at 72. They do need a safety. And, you know, I don't think Tyler Newbin's great. I'd take him probably like mid to late day three because I just don't think he responds fast enough and he's not a good athlete. We know that part. 
but he's a it's a position that is extremely understandable and realistic. Lions go Jerry and Jones. I think you're essentially going to have to put him in the same role as um, why am I tripping up? I literally see his Alabama numbers 13 as well, but the Alabama slot corner slash safety you guys drafted last year. Detroit would be, I mean, Jerry and Jones is a dog. I'm perfectly fine with it, but you're essentially going to have to have Brian Branch. You're going to have to have a a real talk as to what you want for the future between these two guys. Cause I think it's a little bit overlapping of their best capabilities. Falcons going Chris Jenkins at 74. That's just BPA right there. I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, Bears go Luke McCaffrey. It's a bit early for him in my opinion, but you know what? I respect uh, Luke McCaffrey a lot and the Bears want to take a swing on a wide receiver. Who am I to say no? Adiza Isaac goes to the Denver Broncos at 76. He's a really, really good. He's a really good depth player. Um, very smart, high IQ, just not really the most super talented player, but he's top 64 on my board. This is good value for him. Raiders end up going Nehemiah Pritchett at 77. It's a bit early for me, but you know, he's actually someone who I've just continuously felt like I should have him higher, even though I don't. So honestly, I could see it. I ended up ending up working out. Commanders then go with Theo Johnson at 78. That's a pick that I'm I can accept. Uh, he's a good tight end after the catch. I actually think that he's been really, really solid. So I think the commanders could certainly use another tight end too. So this would actually be a really good pick. Same thing with the Falcons going Tyke Smith. Uh, somebody who, again, I, I I desperately hate the safety and slot class. Well, I actually love the slot class. I hate the safety class. Um, but Tyke Smith is somebody who I really, really liked. And I needed to see the figures on because he was projected in the four sixes. And then he ran in the four fours because I love his game. but. You know, when you see someone projecting the four sixes, it's very difficult unless you are a cerebral player like um, Kyle Hamilton to really succeed. But Tyke Smith running that, he'll get a re-eval. Bengals going Kingsley Sua Mataya is perfectly fine by me at pick 80. I don't really trust him to play left tackle, but he's going to be playing right tackle here, which I'd be willing to stretch a little bit of comfortability to take him end of the first if need be. Uh, 81, the Seahawks go Layden Robinson. I feel like that's a Seahawks move. I don't trust Leighton Robinson at all. I think that he's a depth piece at best, but he actually has tackle length. So kind of shows you it's a tackle that failed that moved into guard. But Leighton Robinson has a ton of untapped potential. Maybe the Seahawks can get it out of him. Austin Booker goes at, at 82 to the Colts. I don't really know if the Colts would be down for an unathletic 240-pound edge rusher, but if they are, I mean, Austin Booker has had some really good reps just it doesn't seem to be very translatable. The Rams end up going Jeremiah Trotter at 83. That is a good pick to me. I'm not a huge fan of Jeremiah Trotter, but the Rams need linebacker. I don't think they actually go after it because they don't value the position that highly, but I think this is actually a good move. Malachi Gorley to the Steelers. It's a very realistic move, honestly, to replace Deontay Johnson. And good after the catch. I think that he'd work really well with us. You know, screw Quez Watkins. That's not going to stop me from trying to replace my slot with an upgrade. Browns go Karan Amagaji. That's a great pick. Uh, good depth here. So surprisingly, we're on a roll with Chad Reuter, which is a surprise. Cade Stover pairs back up with CJ Stroud. That's going to be a pick that I implement if I end up doing another seven-round mock. Love that for the Texans right there. Uh, Cowboys go Zach Frazier. Obviously, fell really far. Broke his leg, uh, I think, four months ago. So it is potentially possible that he could be here. And the Cowboys, I mean... I don't need to be the one to tell you that that would be a damn good pick. Uh, the Packers end up selecting Brandon Dorless at pick 88. Brandon Dorless is one of those players who's very difficult to grade because I, deep down, I want to put him as a top 64 player. But it's just like, I don't know what role he's going to play in the NFL, man. Uh, pick 89, we got Mo Kamara, who is a top 64 player on my board to the Buccaneers. So, you know, I think this team needs a day one impact and he's a day one impact. Falcons end up going junior Colson at pick number 90. They got that tr that pick from that trade with the Cardinals and um, they end up maximizing it with a really talented player. Mikey Sainer still ends up going to the Packers as well. You're going to have him growing under Keyshawn Nixon and seeing what he can do there. He's a feisty dude who's a former wide receiver who's still learning the game. But, you know, this guy is someone who I really love and I could see him really working out. Buccaneers then go Marshawn Lloyd at pick 92. As long as he stops fumbling, he should be RB1 in the class. Uh, Keon Coleman obviously shouldn't slip to pick 93. This would have to be some sort of um, injury concern or, you know, 
maybe some personality concern, which I haven't really seen any work ethic issues from Keon Coleman, except for the fact I didn't see him progress significantly in his uh, route running or release package over the year. And he was with Johnny Wilson, who kind of his best traits are the release package and the route running. So obviously Baltimore would be taking a massive W here. And it's very EDC, Eric Costa to be able to go after that. But Keon Coleman, a great player. 94 Dolphins go Cam Kitchens. You know, he was supposed to be a top 10 pick. Just ended up testing out very, very poorly. And I just don't know why. I don't know what happened. I really don't. The whole entire Miami squad, uh, it, it broke my heart. So I hope that Cam Kitchens bounces back. Uh, then we have the Chiefs going Will Shipley at pick 95. I mean, he's a fun back to watch. Obviously, I haven't done my running back rankings because everybody and their dog has done running back rankings. And, you know, if I'm not going to provide value to you guys, I don't really think it's worth my time to go through and spend all that time on graphics when, you know, I could just end up telling you about it right now. Uh, 96 Jaguars go Christian Boyd. You know, that's that's good value. This guy needs a lot of training, and you have Eric Armstead there. I'm a big fan of that. Bengals going Kyrie Jackson. That's a good pick in the comp section. Like, that's a really, really good one. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. So he was going Cedric Gray. I'm not a huge fan of Cedric Gray. After getting Patrick Queen, you know, we're going to be getting Cole Hulk come back. It's a little bit early. We haven't even gotten a tackle yet. I'd go after Christian Jones at this point, or, you know, um, why am I forgetting Blake Fisher? I want to say Blake Frazier, but no, uh, Blake Fisher would be the option I would go with at this point. Rams end up going Cole Bishop, who's a phenomenal safety. Uh, that's a great move for the Rams. Then the commanders go Cedric Johnson. That's a really, really, really early. I was a big Cedric Johnson guy coming to the year. I didn't see anybody have Cedric Johnson higher than on their board than I did at the start of the year. And, you know, he looked lackluster. He actually took a massive regression step. So not a fan of that. Now we go on to round number four. All hell is about to break loose. Jermaine Burton to the Panthers happened to, at 101 last time. I'm perfectly fine with that one. You know, you're pairing him back up with Bryce. Has personality concerns, but the talent, he was a top 32 guy for me, talent-wise, for a very, very long time. And he's just, you know, kind of shithead. At pick 102, the Eagles go after Bo Braid after bringing on, or I guess extending, uh, you know, Ed Reed Blankenship. I don't really see the actual need to go after a safety at this point. You have so many guys who are even safety versatile on the roster. That is a little bit of a waste, in my opinion. The Patriots end up going after Leonard Taylor. I mean, if you have time to develop, which this team does, uh, this is the right move. Pick number 104, the Cardinals go Braylon Allen. This is a 20-year-old kid who is a freight train in a straight line. People talk about, oh, look at his feet. I mean, the guy... I mean, this dude's indecisive as hell, so thank God he can at least, you know, do something because his feet can work. But um, I'm not a fan of Braylon Allen. You know, I just haven't been a fan of Braylon Allen. I think he's somebody who's extremely hit or miss, and the NFL does rely on consistency from the running back position. You don't really draft a home run hitter if they're not going to be consistent. So I'm really hoping that I'm wrong about Braylon Allen, but at pick 104, I can digest it. Chargers then go Chris Abrams drain slot versatile defensive back. I love that idea for him. Uh, he's a good back as well. Chris Braswell to the Titans getting some extra depth at edge. Never a bad idea at 106. That's a good pick. Spencer Rattler goes to the Giants at 107. I mean, again, a really good competition there. Uh, Cam Little Arkansas kicker goes to the Vikings. I think Mevis would probably be the first kicker I'd take off the board. Uh, if I were the Vikings, I'd be a little bit pissed at my third pick would end up being Cam Little. Uh, but at pick 109, we got the Falcons going Jalen Polk. You know, Jalen Polk, this value is like really good right now. What's up, dog? Uh, then we got pick 110 for the Chargers going South Satoa Laumea. Eh, eh. I mean, um, offensive line certainly is a position I think is worth targeting, but I just don't think he's worth a fourth round pick. I don't remember where I took him in mind, but it was probably like a late fourth. So maybe I'm like eating my own words here, but I don't really think that's an impact move for the Chargers. Jets end up going Malik Washington at pick 111. A lot of people are going to love that. I'm not a big Malik Washington guy, but again, it's a day three. I'm perfectly fine with it. Panthers going Dylan McMahon. I keeping him in North Carolina. So that's pretty cool, but I don't really think he's that good of a player. Then we have the Baltimore Ravens getting Christian Haynes at 113. After taking Dylan McMahon, I would fire the can the Panthers front office again. Uh, Christian Haynes obviously should not fall this far, but the Ravens end up winning as they always do. 
Jaguars go Blake Fisher. You're essentially going to be putting Anton Harrison to left tackle, which is perfectly fine, uh, but probably not for one extra year. Blake Fisher is a good pick. Then we got Deflon Ulofosho for the Bengals. It's a pick that I've made. Uh, it's good value player with injury history who's a really talented player. Jaguars get Brendan Rice, who I have as uh, definitely a top 75 player. I don't know if I have him. He is number 65 on my board at the moment. So uh, great pick right there. Colts then go Blake Watson out of Memphis. It's a little bit early for Blake, but you know I do like the highlights I've seen. Uh, Jalex Hunt is such a Seattle Seahawks, so I'm a pretty big fan of that, and he's actually a really good player. So this would be actually a steal for the Seahawks and someone who I want to add into my seven rounders. Steelers end up going Javon Foster at 119. That's a good value for offensive tackle. I will take it. Eagles then go Jared Wiley. Um, their past few tight ends, they've starting tight ends they've drafted have been when the starting tight end was 28 years old. Dallas Goddard is 28. Jared Wiley, I think, could actually start on this team. And it might have been a pick that I made for Philly in my seven round. So I like that a lot. Rugororo goes to the Denver Broncos at 121. Really good player, top 64 player on my board. Uh, Walter Rouse goes to the Bears developmental offensive tackle. I don't really know if four picks out of like with four picks, the Bears should go after a developmental offensive tackle. Um, a little bit of a shank right there. Love Curtis Jacobs there for the text at 123. He's someone who I still have top 64 on my board. Of course, we'll be getting re-evaled soon. I mean, like, look at that. Look at that right there. Beautiful. Uh, Kalen Bullock then goes to the San Francisco 49ers. They strike gold twice at from USC with their safeties. Uh, pick 125 with the Buccaneers, Elijah Jones. He's a little bit thin, but he's actually really pretty damn talented as well. Uh, Packers go Miles Cole, 37-inch arms damn near. I uh, love that. The Packers certainly are a team that values that you know physical upside. But the Texans then go after Christian Jones, right tackle, but technically flexible. Um, out of Texas. I'm a big fan of that pick. Bills go Makai Wingo. Uh, Wingo's a little bit undersized. He's not the best player in my opinion, but you know he, he popped off at the combine because he's a good athlete and he needs a little more consistency. I pick 128. I think that's an absolute win. Same thing with the Vikings going Christian Mahogany at 129. Both these players, maybe I'm not super high on because I see them sometimes get taken really high compared to where I think they should go. This is really good value for them. DTD, Dadrian Taylor Demerson going to the Ravens safety out of Texas Tech at 130. Perfectly fine with that. DeCameron Richardson, a really solid corner. I love Mississippi State corners. I think this is a good move for KC. Dolphins end up going Gabriel Murphy at 132. You know, I think that's okay. Not not bad. <laughs> You know, Gabriel Murphy at 132. I've given him, I think I sent him to the Bears for a very similar uh, spot. So I think that's perfectly fine. Bills go Jonah Ellis at 133. I have him as a DPR. I obviously, I think he would be willing, I'd be willing to take him top 100. Absolutely. You know, you ended up playing four games with a messed up shoulder, but his run IQ is atrocious. He's actually just a really good pass rusher. Jets end up going Tyron Hopper. He's actually, a, he could learn a lot from Hassan Reddick. I think that the upside this this would be really, really solid place for Tyron Hopper to go. Maybe a little bit early, I think, for the Jets to take him, but I would be perfectly fine with it. Andre Gestime then goes to the Niners. They always take somebody in rounds three or four every year. Um, the value is right for him. But pick 136, the Broncos go Andrew Phillips. Uh, as you all can see, Andrew Phillips is my number nine player in the draft. So technically, if you add all of these digits up, it would be 10, 6 plus 3 plus 1. So even the some of the single digits is less than where I have them on my board or more than where I have them on my board. Uh, so y'all know how I feel about that. Patriots go Jarius Monroe. I think it's a solid corner. Uh, Patriots should get some corner depth. Falcons go Jordan Travis. I just, I'm not a big Jordan Travis guy. So I don't think the Falcons need to do that, especially when they're more win now mode. Uh, Commanders go Keelan Robinson. He's a talented back. I think that he gets a little bit at the short end of the stick. And 139 is a bit early though. Chargers go Jaden Crumity. I mean, I love Mississippi State defensive linemen, so, you know, I'd be willing to give him a chance, but again, it's a bit early for some of these guys. Again, at, at round number five, that's okay. Jalen Hurl to the Panthers as well. That's a solid player. Uh, it's again, players, these guys are a little bit early. Jalen Ford, I think this is proper value for him. Going to the Panthers, a linebacker, you know, that's a 
it is what it is. Uh, DJ James to the Falcons at 143 is good value. He's a little bit on the lighter side, but he ended up, I think, getting around that 180 range, which is acceptable to me. Bills end up going Malik Mustafa, someone who I liked quite a bit from the Senior Bowl at 144. That's a win in my book. Tommy Eichenberg to the Cardinals at 145. I mean, the Cardinals are doing a good job this draft, too. Uh, Titans go McKinley Jackson at 146. Defensive interior with 325 pounds right there. Uh, he didn't test out as athletically as I expected, but he's a fun guy who I could totally see starting in the NFL. So good value there. Garrett Greenfield feels like a Denver Bronco. He goes to them at 147. Good tackle depth. Jalen Simpson, uh, good safety depth for the Panthers. You have a year to develop him as well. 149, Bengals go Sundiata Anderson. Going to be honest, I did not study him, so I'll take it on the chin on that one. Uh, you got 150. New Orleans Saints go Miles Harden. Injuries are the only reason why he'd be down here. His talent's actually really, really solid. Pick 151, you got the Colts going to Nia Smith with the kick return rules. This could certainly be the sniping range for Nia Smith. Commanders go Dominic Pooney at 152. Super versatile tackle guard center prospect out of Kansas. Uh, that's a win right there for them. Jaguars go Dominic Hampton. Safety out of Washington, 220 pounds. Good to develop, but it might be a little too much overlap there with uh, Johnson, who they got in the fifth round last year. Rams go back-to-back -back picks with Matt Goncalves and Will Reichard. You know, uh, offensive line depth, always a good idea. Uh, Rams certainly could be in the market for a kicker. Jaheim Bell goes to the Browns. I think that that's a sneaky, solid pick right there. I love Jaheim Bell. Uh, really good player. Underrated. Uh, probably one of the more underrated players. Speaking of a very underrated player, Javon Baker to the Vikings. Uh, there's just no all-22 on him, so... You know, just wanted to be able to show some love without having an official grade. Jacob Cowing to the Dolphins. He just was a little bit undersized and didn't do too much to really wow me, but uh, he was a top 50 player coming into the year, so the talent is there. Jordan McGee is a really solid linebacker out of Temple. Kansas City would be getting a very good depth piece there. Gene McMillan slipping to 160 is hard to fathom, but if he does, the Bills would be blessed to have him. Uh, Eagles go after another flexible defensive back in Keelan King. At 161, I think that's perfectly fine. He had a shit offseason, pretty poor end of the year, but he was a potential first-round pick for the first half of the year as well as all last year. Gabe Hall goes at 162 to the Cardinals. He had a solid senior bowl. I think it's fine with me. Beanie Bishop out of West Virginia, someone who I never got to actually study. So, um, you know, I like the Bills getting defensive back. But you got Ryan Flournoy, Southeastern Missouri, uh, going to the Detroit Lions. Getting after wide receiver is it's a little bit late, but I think that's perfectly fine for the Lions. Better late than never. Ravens then go Xavier Thomas. It's a pick I think I made in my uh, in my seven round mock for them back when I was doing those for each team. Pick number one sixty six. The Giants go Justin Boyge. 290 pounds. Very interesting to see where he ends up working. Um, Vikings go Braden McGregor. Edge rusher out of Michigan. I think it's worth taking the swing on at 167. 168, the Saints go Dylan Loeb. 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 I don't know. But um, he's a good player. Great work ethic. Saints, I think it's a little bit early for them, but it's okay. Uh, Bucky Irving goes to the Packers. I mean, the value is incredible. He just tested awfully, but he's a really good back. Tyler Davis pairing back up with his former buddy and Brian Breezy at 170. Works in my book. Caden Wallace, developmental offensive tackle out of Penn State for the Eagles. I'm fine with that. Same thing with Trajan Jeff Code, developmental edge rusher out of Arkansas, going to Philly. So back to back picks of developmental players. This team would be gearing up for the future. Frank Crum tested out really solid. Uh, he's going to the Chiefs. He's a developmental tackle slash interior offensive line prospect. Then we got the Cowboys going Josh Newton, going right down the road from Arlington to Fort Worth. Uh, really good value on him. Nathaniel Watson, you know, to the Saints, they need to be able to get some form of contingency plan and line in place for linebacker. It's at 175. It's worth it. Tip Ryman is going to be potentially the future for the Niners, but at the very minimum, he's a fun story to have on your roster. So that's gonna be the video It's actually not as atrocious as I expected. There were some atrocities in there, but Chad Ruder, you did, I mean, it's kind of hard not to, but you did better than your last mock draft. And that is all that matters. As long as you improve every mock draft, eventually you get to something that is palatable and acceptable. So that's going to be the video. Thank you so much for watching. Love y'all. See you on the far side. Peace.